tips, tricks and Andy Ince video, here's another one. Bivy tips. Yeah, spelled T-I-P-Z. Bivy tips. So I'm here with Wigan and uh, we're doing a little bit of, uh, what are we doing? We're candle making. Candle making. So we're making candles. What are the candles for? Basically for the bivy. Yeah. Uh, I use candle. I take a grave candle I bought from Sweden and basically I put it on my little bivy table and it just flickers all night. And the beauty of it is, yeah, it'll burn all night. It'll burn for bloody loads of nights, depending on how big your candle is. You'll get hundred and odd hours out of some of them. And it just keeps the bivy, a little bit of light in the bivy. So if you're up in the middle of the night for a one toner, one toner, Mike, yeah, one toner, you're not grabbing about in the dark. You've got that little bit of light to spot the old racing slippers and your uh, headlamp. If you've got one of the big chunky monkeys like me and you don't want to sleep with it on your head, you've got to put it on your bivy table. There's that little bit of light uh, that just gives you that boom, there's my headlamp, there's my racing slippers, and then you're off out of the bivy like shit off a Teflon shovel. So we're making candles, okay? Little bivy candles, and there's another one. I've just got a uh, Aqua M3 compact, haven't I? Compact. Off right. yourself, Michael. Bought yeah. it off Michael, and I tried it for the first time. Uh, last weekend, didn't we, when we was at uh, Pikus Interrupters. A bit dark, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bit dark in there, so it lights it up, but there's something else that I put the bivy door up, and when I woke up, it was a lot warmer inside than it was outside, so just that one flickering candle does make a difference in the temperature in those freezing cold nights. So, of course, it is a little bit, uh, it's a little bit, uh, a little bit of comfort, let's say. A bit of ambient light. Ambient light. Ambient light. So one, you can see what the chuff you're doing in the middle of the night when it's going the whole tits up, carpus interrupter style. And two, it just takes the degrees down or, or, or ups the temperature that one degree for a little bit more comfort. Yeah. So Mike, what he's doing there, he's stirring the candle wax at the moment. That's ready now. We're happy days. Right, so what we'll do... Yeah, we'll show you what you need to make candles. Tips, tricks, and Andy Ince. Right, so candle making. What are we going to need to make candles? Well, first you're going to need some wax. <laughs> <laughs> Two kilos of flaked soy wax. Why so, soy wax, Chris? Eh? Well, apparently the soy wax doesn't smell where you can get petroleum wax or something like that where it kicks off a bit of a stink and apparently there's no smoke off it as well uh, I'm led to believe that's only what I've read I've not at least tested these yet so I've got two kilos of soy wax there that's flakes basically you're gonna need some of that you're gonna need obviously some wicks so there's the wicks these are 180 uh, millimeter wicks there we go. You see that, Michael? Oh, yes. Wicks. Top bomber. <laughs> <laughs> there. It's so, in bag. <laughs> 180 mil or 18 centimetres. Yeah. Let's have a look if that is 18. Yeah, that's about right. About, that, right. about 18 centimetres, that. So what you're going to need is something to put it in. What I'm using is jars. Okay. Here's one we made earlier. So that is basically... As the pitted green olives it's a jar that'll burn for hours that hopefully not tested them yet but I'm, they've got to test them as well but this is just the making so that's what we got there is an olives jar in that one so you can use any jars I've saved coffee jars because I'm a rat hoarder that's a uh, I think that's like a fangita jar something like that anyway I went to school with it <laughs> And a lesbian friend, Minge Eater. Yeah. <laughs> and a fat mate, Binge Eater. <laughs> or, I've got a little Coleman's Mustard jar here. This is the one we're doing now. Coleman's Mustard. That's a little shorter, nice little compact one for sticking in your bivy. Why is it handy to keep the lids? Yeah, why is it handy to keep the lids? I'll tell ah. you why. That was so, clever, that, wasn't it? Did you like that? Yeah, I like, I like that when you told me that. So what you do is, you've got your, keep your lid... Yeah, your candle's burning away. Right, it's time to pack up. Stick the lid on. Yeah, basically takes the oxygen out and it goes out. Plus it all keeps all the smoke in there as well. Wait till your wax has settled, gone hard again. Chuck it back in your bag. Top bomber. Tips, tricks. And Andy Ince. <laughs> so we're melting some wax there. For now. Diddly dee, diddly dee. And apparently there's different temperatures to get to the wax to. If it's very clear, it's hot. 
yeah if it's like a milky color it's just melted and it obviously it sets quicker so what we're ending up with is hopefully something like that yeah what what do you put a smell in that didn't you i put yeah can you smell it i didn't put much in yeah well you didn't need a lot did you no so what i've put in melted in with the melted wax is cinnamon oil essential oils i was going to use that for bait making but obviously if you've seen a, there are a couple of lives i did i tasted that and it tasted like shit yeah and i thought i'm not putting that in bait so i'm sticking that in the candle wax so you've got like a christmasy cinnamon type cinnamon. smell in your bivvy so if you're all sat alone christmas day on the bank because you've got no friends yeah you can sit there with a christmasy smell bivvy get yeah. yourself a bit of turkey some sprouts some roast potatoes and bobs your teapot no humans <laughs> Right, so the other stuff you're going to need uh, for this is a glue gun. A little glue gun there, pluggy in type. Yeah, cheap and chatty glue gun. With some glue sticks, obviously. Okay, you're going to need. Uh, I, I've just got coffee stirrers from Costa. Yeah, rob them. Yeah, well, look, just relocate them basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah relocate them. It's not robbing them. No, not robbing Repurposing. them. Repurposing. Yeah. You're going to need a pen. Yeah. Gonna need a pen, Mike. What are you gonna need a pen for? Well, you take the pen out, you take the cap out, and you're left with that very useful tool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for candle making. Okay. Uh, then you're gonna need your wicks, obviously. Bit of sellotape that comes in dandy to stand it up straight. And obviously, we've got our uh, melted wax there. All right. So what you've got to do first, and found out here, you take your wick. Take a nice wick, it's got that little metal bit on the bottom, it's crimped in there. As soon as you put bloody hot glue on that, it melts it and falls off. So what I've got to do is you've got to get a pair of Danny Dyers, and you might, yeah. and you've got to crimp it a little bit tighter. But they are a bit bit funny these to crimp. So you've just got to crimp it onto the, the actual wick a bit more, like that. They don't pull off then. Then what we do, okie dokie, is we put a bit of the old glue gun onto the bottom of the plate but that's going to heat it up now and then the wax melts on there and it falls off chips tricks and handy testicles then what we do we put our pen in there could look like that here aren't it we're whipping a pen like that and then we can put that at the bottom of the jar Well, basically, I've jabbed that down and I can take the top off. So I've stuck it to the bottom of the jar now. Tips, tricks. And the ends. Okie dokie. So that's ready to go now, apart from a little bit of sellotape to make it completely vertical. So get me all sellotape. And like I've done here, here's one I made earlier. Mm -hmm. I've just sellotaped it so the wick stuck up. Yeah, and I've left a little hole there for pouring my wax in. Happy days. So then you get a pan of water boiling water, a glass jug, right so a glass jug there, that's a Pyrex jug for doing my gravy, I'm no longer going to be doing gravy in that, I melt it, you're going to need a tea towel at first, otherwise you're going to have Nickelauda, Nickelauda trotters, <laughs> okie dokie, grab me a little, uh, that's a Coleman's mustard one, oh you hold that there Michael, thank you very much sir, and then I'm just going to pour that in the gap, Light it up. And you see how that candle wax has melted now. You've got to be able to hold it up. So get us a bit of sellotape, Michael. Michael, my Sunday name. It's Mike the Pike. <laughs> I'm just going to sellotape that up a bit. Stops it falling over then. So that's it, obviously it's melted wax, molten wax, stood up, and now we're going to place that precariously in the fridge. So, to the fridge, Mike the, the fridge. Pike, to the Mary Mungo, and Midge. So I'm going to place that in there, Let's make sure that is vertical now, because I want it to burn down the centre. There we 
go. And there's one we made earlier. Still a bit warm there. It's got a bit of a sinkhole in it. More on sinkholes later. But we'll leave that one go. A little bit harder. It's got to go hard. So straight in the fridge. Tips, tricks and handy hints. Right, back to the stove, Michael. So we haven't got much uh, wax left there. That's a little bit hot. Yeah. So I'm going to put a little bit more in there. You can have it a milky colour. Okay. Bring the bag over, Michael. I should be hoovering in a minute. I pay somebody to do my hoovering. Do you? Yeah. I don't. I do it myself, you see, because I'm lazy. So again, that's what it turns out like. And then, of course, I'm going to try that. I'm going to burn it in it and see how long it lasts, really. Yeah, and it'll give me that nice little glow. Again, I've not tested it yet, so I don't know if it works or not. But again... Yeah, you can make your own candles. I'm sure that it's, uh, it's not that difficult, is it? How hard can it be? I know how expensive they are. <laughs> I miss you forever buying them. So let's get it in a pan of water. There we go. So again, don't put it straight in a pan, you'll burn it. You've got a lot of that melting and melting chocolate, isn't it? So again, we're not going to make this a clear wax this one, we're going to keep it a little bit milky because the thicker it is the better the the, uh, the wick stands up in it vertically because you don't want it flopping over. It's all about yeah, viscosity. It is mate, otherwise if you've got a wobbly wick it'll look like Harvey Price has done it. Nothing works in a wobbly wick. So what I used to use originally were these grave candles from Sweden. Okay, obviously they're for people's graves. Yeah. And uh, there's the small ones. They burn for 55 hours. The big one, yeah, so that one was 55 hours. Obviously each, not between the pair. This one is 110 hours. Grave use, which means basically grave candle. Yeah, so that's that one. And the one we've made is roughly I'd say the same size isn't it so you're looking at like 100 hours probably but obviously you've got to test it first yeah but that's where I got the idea from and it does it just lights the bivy up just enough to enough light to grab your shit before you go belting out okay yeah uh, and of course uh, that one toner for that one toner that never comes the elusive just, one toner yeah, the elusive winter one toner where uh, you never get it and you just go for about 400 candles before you get a fish yeah, so that's where I basically got the idea from, and that's a milky one now, isn't it, mate? So yeah, it's melted, but it's not melted clear. So obviously, it's a, it's a lower temperature. It'll but, set quicker, won't it? Yeah, exactly. We've we got any lumps in there, Michael? No, all lumps are out. Are they? Like wallpaper paste, that. Mm. Or about. Could that thirty blokes from man fat? Yeah. Oh, just mine. Just yours. <laughs> On a good day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So as you can see, you can stand that up in there. It's a little bit, uh, yeah. Oh, it's a bit thick. It is. We'll just uh, get that going there. We're going to fill this one up. This is a coffee jar one, and that's the old there. Uh, which one's that? That's from bloody Aldi. The Aldi Colombian coffee. Oh yeah. Yeah. So you can use. Oh, here's another one I'm going to use. Probably. Again, there's another one. Plastic lid. Nice little coffee jar. I think that's Aldi all lid on. Espresso. Mm. Anyway, so again, save your jars, kids. Tip six and on the ends. Yeah, they're plastic on the grave use, on the grave use, on the grave candles. They're actually plastic there, no lid. Obviously, these are glass, but it's tough glass, isn't it? So if you drop it, yeah, the chances are it's not going to break unless you know throwing it against the wall. Then mm. that's a different story. Yeah. If you're a mad crazy teenager who's got a bit upset with the phone, you know what they do? Oh, Dad's yeah. paid 600 quid for the phone, they smash it on the wall. Down. Yeah, and that's it. I want another one. Get me another phone, Dad. Yeah, yeah if you do that, you're going to break it. So if you get upset with your candles and start whacking them against walls, there's the chances are, yeah, it's going to end up in pieces. Ah, that's going thinner and all that. We're going thinner. Well, we'll hold that then there, Mike. I reckon that, that's just right for pouring. Happy day. So we'll just shift that to one side. If you want to hold that wick, Michael. And I'll do the pouring. Oh, 
hang on, let's pull that one first and then we'll get a bit of sellotape on that one first. So I'll just pick that up, watch me trotters, it is a bit warm. So I'm just going to pull that in there, watch that thing's going to flop, it's going to flop straight away. As soon as it gets warm it'll start flopping. This is a garlic, uh, crushed garlic jar this. I think it's from Moan Bargains. There we go, tick top, put that back in there. A little bit of sellotape. So get a bit of sellotape now. Mm. Bite that off and just hold it in place and that's up in the middle then. And then put that in the Craig Avon Bridge. Tips, tricks and handy ends. Have a look at that. Keep your wicks right. Yeah. No worse than what, Michael? Wobbly wick. <laughs> chocolate isn't it? isn't it well taste it see if it is white chocolate might be I tasted it. it tastes a bit waxy does it yeah might be the new waxy white chocolate for snowflakes yeah 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 snowflakes <laughs> <laughs> very Christmas sir mm. Michael I think we've got a sinkhole in that one haven't we what it's called in the candle making business is apparently a sinkhole and this is quite normal and basically it just you can see there, there's a big hole in the middle. It's a little sinkhole, that's what they call it. That? I don't know, but I think because what happens there is, yeah, when it's hot, it expands. And then when it cools, it contracts and it always leaves a little sinkhole like that. Okay, so we're just going to fill that up. We're going to top that up with a bit of hot wax now in the old little hole there. To try and fill that in and see how that works. But either way, apparently in the candle making world, that is normal, and it's known as a sinkhole. Sinkhole. Yeah. Michael used to go out with a woman called Sinkhole, and a sister Thud. <laughs> thud. <laughs> Sinkholes. Right. So while we're waiting for the uh, wax to melt to the correct temperature. Uh, where do we get these from? Yeah, right, I got the wicks and I got the uh, the wax off eBay. It's somewhere a place called Livemore. Two kilos was about 12 quid, 11 and a half quid. Sounds a lot, that. It does, doesn't it, for two kilos of uh, probably excess wax from the candle factory. Yeah, but that's the wax. Soy wax, there's all different kinds. And these I got from somewhere else. I think it was 50, 180 centimetre. Yeah, not 180 centimetre, 180 millimetre, 18 centimetre uh, waxed wicks. And where did they get them from? Uh, well, I don't know, but it, oh, they come from London. But I got 50 for about 2 quid. So basically, for 14, 15 quid, I've made a bloody load of candles. Yeah, but again, I won't be making 50 out of 2 kilos of wax. Yeah, we'll show you what we've made later. Okay, so Mac Michael is getting it to that milky consistency. Yeah. Yeah. Where well, we're going to fill up the old coffee jar. So the old Aldi Square coffee jar. Yeah, again, keep the lids, lads. Then you can screw them on, extinguishes in the flame, keeps all the smoking as well. And again, if you accidentally knock it over, lids on. Yeah. But again, with candles in the bivy, uh, that's a risk, isn't it? Yeah, rolling over in the middle of the night, knocking your candle off. So, my advice is don't roll over in the middle of the night. And knock your candle over. Tips, tricks, and handy hints. Do a risk assessment first. Documented risk assessment. Okay? Well, unless you could see, then don't fucking bother. <laughs> Make it up as you go along. We're having a little wager actually that could see your Bernie's shed down by February next year. Well, he's already, he's already tried drilling all the time. Yeah, oh, yeah. Can't, can't, I just, yeah. I, I'm, I, I've put a tenner on February next year. <laughs> Right, I reckon that's uh, about right, mate. Just about jiggery pokery, that. Jiggery pokery, that's the new word. Stop saying that because it sticks in my head and it's doing me head in. <laughs> I'm lying in bed at night going jiggery pokery, jiggery, jiggery pokery. When you can't sleep. Yeah, jiggery yeah. pokery too fake, jiggery pokery too fake. Yeah. That's it. Right, to the coffee jar. We are white. Super. Right, so a little bit of a. Uh... This is just what I bloody put a bit of sellotape Ooh, on there. We don't want to go clear. Don't want to go clear. We want a nice milky one there. Don't go clear. Get them bits off okay. the side there. Just centralise that jiggery pokery there. That's ready to go. Right, I'll get my uh, 
my tea towel just in case it's a bit hot. And then we go. But well, that's going to drop, so we have to get ready with the cellar tape, Mike. Alright, uh, ready? Mike, the pipe, stick Van Dyke. Oh, a few chunks in there, Mike. Some lumps in it. There is. Oh, looks like sick. <laughs> yeah, that's enough for it. Chip in the pokery. Oh. A bit more silly old tape. Silly tape, yeah. And that should hold it vertical. Okie dokie, Michael. To the fridge. To the fridge. Okie dokie then, Mike. What's okay. out for the sinkholes? Yeah. That'll go in there. <laughs> I'll start on your head. Humorous, right? I'll start on your head. Screaming Delkims, the candle terrorist. <laughs> candle cave. That's you're just going to top the old sinkholes up now. As you can see, I'll just take that bit of cellar tape off there. Watch the wick. Yeah. Come on, get your wick out. You can see it clearly there now. Oh, it's a fair old it's hole, a that, fair isn't it? Yeah, you could get lost in there, couldn't you? It's a like looking down the dog's ears. Bit warm, that, Michael. Bit warm. There you go. You're like Debbie McGee, you. My little, uh... Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to chop them sinkholes up. Never done this before, so we'll just have to see how it works. Get it, oh, hey, that doesn't look too bad now. Bit of shaking in case yeah. there's any air in it. Oh, you can smell that cinnamon now, can't you? Dude, it smells nice up there. Oh. Love the nicest smelling bivvy on the lake. Will do. Big Christmassy type bivvy, won't it? Oh. Oh. That proper sticks that then it's because it's been yeah. warm. Could do with a pair of scissors actually. A pair of scissors? I don't want to rip the wick off. Scissors. There we go. Yeah. Oh it's still not yeah, it's still not set in there yet. That one. So I'll just put that little bit of sinkhole interrupt us. There we go. Right. Into the fridge, Mike the Pike. Back into the fridge. Into the fridge, Mike the Pike. That's an old garlic one, it does an half honk of garlic. There we go. One more Mike. One more. Two more, Mike. And then the big one. This was, this, was, this was an experimental prototype. Again, just fill in that little sinkhole. Top bomber. I'll do it like that. There we go. Not quite the professional standard light, but I'm not a professional candle maker, am I? No. But again, what we'll do, we'll test them on the next outing. So we've made a couple, yeah. Uh, a few sinkholes in these, but one's turned out quite good. Yeah, there we go. Top bomber. Can you not knock it? Try that when we go fishing now, see so how it works, because it might be Barry White. It what's, might be a little that flame one? like that. That one smell. That's a nout. Hmm. Hmm. What else have we got in here? Just filled a couple of sinkholes. That's the old Coleman mustard one. Yeah. It's mustard, that, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's a garlic jar. Leave them overnight in fridge. So, there we go. So the next thing is to test them. Obviously, on to the see bank. on the bank to see how they work. And if they work, they work. If they don't, never mind. We can always melt it and try again. 
Tip six. And I'll the ins. To bomber, can you not knock it? <laughs> back right. of the onion bag. <laughs> <laughs> back, of the, back of the Aldi bag. <laughs> yeah. Right, so that's it. Now I've got to tidy up because everything's covered in, in wax. Yeah, it's everywhere. And we must have done a good kilo and a half there, I reckon, kilo. Yeah. Yeah, done a good kilo. We'll, sell, again. we'll sell that tonight. We will, yeah. <laughs> Chop it fine, put it in smaller bags, sell it yeah. to 60 quid at Smack Rats. See you later then, kids. Say bye, Michael. See you later, Michael. Say, Michael. Tip six and Andy Bollocks. Bye.